I'd like to call the meeting to order, please. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Call, please. Councilor Clemens? Present. Councilor Langevin? Present. Councilor Livingood? Present. Councilor Marcucci? Present. Councilor McDonald? Present. Councilor Nicola? Present. Councilor Regis? Excused. Councilor Spinelli? Present. Councilor Vandal? Present. Eight present? Thank you. Consider and accept the council minutes of Monday, May 21st, 2012 meeting. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Abstain. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Seven yes, one abstain. Thank you. Agenda item number four, consider and accept the public hearing minutes of Monday, May 21st, 2012. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay, roll call please. Councilor Livingood? Abstain. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Abstain. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Six yes to abstain. Thank you. Agenda item number five, subcommittee reports, A, general government, Councilor Spinelli. Thank you, Madam Chair. A meeting of the general government subcommittee was held on Wednesday, May 30th, 2012, in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were Chairman Spinelli, committee members Councillor Vandal, Councillor Regis, citizen members Stephanie DiMartino and Gabriel LaFleche. Also in attendance were Councillor Nicola, Councillor Clements, Councillor Marcucci, Councillor McDonald, Town Manager Clark, Tom Daly, Sean Moriarty, Margaret Morrissey, Amelia Peliquin, Paul Zotos, Roger Cowett, and Estelle Cowett. <clears throat> Meeting was called to order at 7 p.m. Agenda item number one, vote to confirm the appointment of Evelyn Rivera as Municipal Hearing Officer effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2013. Mr. Kalhark discussed the need for a Municipal Hearing Officer to co cover any hearings relating to a 21D violations. Mr. Clark stated he, along with Mrs. Rivera and Mrs. Tortoise, attended the municipal hearing officer training. As the volume of hearings has increased, he is asking for the appointment of two municipal hearing officers so that the backlog of existing cases and future hearings can be handled. Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 148A, a municipal hearing officer is paid a minimum of $2,500. Mrs. Rivera and Mrs. Tortoise will be conducting the hearings in the evenings as required by law, and these hearings will be held at the police station. Councilor Vandal asked why the current municipal hearing officer was not one of the two people now being appointed, and Mr. Clark stated that Mrs. Lamb repeatedly told him she was done. Councilor McDonald asked if the position had been advertised, and Mr. Clark stated it was not advertised to the general public but it was advertised to town employees and only Mrs. Rivera and Mrs. Tortoise took the training. Motion was made by Council Regis and seconded by Mr. LaFleche with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve <coughs> the appointment of Evelyn Rivera as Municipal Hearing Officer effective July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2013. Vote by a show of hands, five to one, Council of Vandal opposed. Agenda item number two, vote to confirm the appointment of Yvonne Tortoise as Municipal Hearing Officer effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2013. Motion was made by Council Regis and seconded by Mr. LaFleche with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the appointment of Yvonne Tortoise as Municipal Hearing Officer effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2013. Vote by a show of hands, five to one, Council of Vandal opposed. Council and McDonald left the meeting at 7.15. Agenda item number three, 
vote to reappoint Karen Harnoy as Town Accountant Finance Director for a five-year term effective August 25, 2012 through August 24, 2017, and to ratify updated employment agreement. Mr. Clark stated, it is important to have a cohesive financial team and he is asking that Mrs. Harnoy's contract be extended according to the terms stated in her contract. Mr. Har Mrs. Harnoy is a key component to his financial team. Several questions were asked and answered regarding portions of the contract. Questions were regarding five weeks of vacation, additional pay for a finance director, vacation carryover, and vacation buyback. A motion was made by Council of Andal and seconded by Mrs. DiMar Ms. DiMartino with a favorable recommendation to Council to reappoint Karen Harnoy <coughs> as the Town Accountant Finance Director for a five-year term effective August 25, 2012 through August 24, 2017 and to ratify updated employment agreement. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, six to nothing. Agenda item number four. Vote to confirm the appointment of Attorney John Giorgio of Copelman and Page for the purpose of assisting in the location of the, of the solar leases that the town, man town may engage or enter into at various locations to be determined. Mr. Clark stated he is trying to get solar leases at the airport and then at other locations. Mr. Clark and Mr. Daly stated and Attorney Giorgio knows the marketplace and they feel more comfortable with Attorney Giorgio guiding them through this process. This work is new technology and Attorney Giorgio's name was the one recommended as being the expert. This appointment would be specifically for this purpose. Council and Nicola asked that an agreement be brought to the council for review. A motion was made by Councilor Regis and seconded by Mr. LaFleche with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the appointment of Attorney John Giorgio of Copelman and Page for the purpose of assisting in the location of the solar <coughs> leases that the town may engage or enter into at various locations to be determined. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, six to nothing. Agenda item number five, vote to confirm the appointment of Attorney Michael E. Scott of Nutter McLennan, McLennan and Fish LLP as special attorney representing the town in regards to the landfill extension agreement. Mr. Clark stated the landfill extension agreement is an extensive and complex document and the agreement calls for a review of the agreement. Copelman and Page drafted the original agreement and therefore cannot review the agreement. Attorney Scott is the person recommended by the market. A motion was made by Councilor Regis and seconded by Mr. LaFleche with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the appointment of Attorney Michael E. Scott of Nutter McLennan and Fish LLP as special attorney representing the town in regards to the landfill extension agreement. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, six to nothing. Mr. Clark made changes to the wording of the next agenda item as follows. Agenda item number six discuss and vote to approve the recommended capital budget needs in accordance with our debt financing plan, the amount of $150,000 for the following. A, appropriate by borrowing of $150,000 for the pur purchase of self-contained breathing apparatus for fire department personnel. B, appropriate by borrowing of $150,000 to be available after 7-1-2012, $90,000 for the library building of a calcimite ceiling and ground improvements <clears throat> of the parking lot and retaining wall in the back of the parking lot, and $60,000 toward the purchase of a backhoe for DPW Highway Department. The balance of $65,000 to be approved for the from the sewer retained earnings. Mr. Clark explained the need for the self-contained breathing apparatus for the fire department personnel as the present equipment is expired. Mr. Clark and Mr. Daly explained the repairs and improvements needed at the library and the need for the backhoe for the DPW Highway Department. Motion was made by Councilor Regis and seconded by Mr. LaFleche with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the recommended capital budget needs in accordance with our debt financing plan the amount of $150,000 for the following. A, 
appropriate by borrowing of $150,000 for the purchase of self-contained breathing apparatus for fire department personnel. B, appropriate by <laughs> borrowing of $150,000 to be available after 7-1-2012. $90,000 of which for the library building for a calcimite ceiling and ground improvements of the parking lot and retaining wall in the back of the parking lot, and $60,000 toward the purchase of a backhoe for DPW Highway Department, the balance of $65,000 to be appropriated from the sewer retained earnings. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, six to nothing. Agenda item number seven, discuss and vote to accept the provisions of chapter 175 of the acts of 2011, sections 29 and 30, thereby increasing the minimum monthly allowance contained in general law, chapter 32, section 12, two, subparagraph D from 250 to $500 per month. Mr. Clark said this request is from the retirement board and currently only impacts one retiree. A motion was made by Council Regis and seconded by Mr. LaFleche with a favorable recommendation to Council to accept the provisions of Chapter 176 of the Acts of 2011, Sections 29 and 30, thereby increasing the minimum monthly allowance contained in General Law, Chapter 32, Section 12-2-D from 250 to $500 per month. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, six to nothing. A, mo a motion to adjourn was made by Councilor Regis and seconded by Mr. LaFleche. Vote by a show of hands. All in favor, six <coughs> to nothing. Meeting adjourned at 8.45 p.m. Um, that's it for the minutes. And there is a, another meeting of the General Government Subcommittee scheduled for next Wednesday. I believe it's the 13th at 7 p.m. in the Rice Conference Room. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor um, McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> a correction to agenda item number one. The question that I asked about the position being advertised, uh, the response I got was not that it was advertised, but that the manager approached certain people. Advertised means an internal posting where it was listed and given everybody an opportunity. Said the, my um, recommended correction to this minutes is when I asked the question of the manager regarding whether or not it had been advertised, the response wasn't that it had been ad advertised, but that he had approached people within the town hall to see who was interested. And advertised is in the form of posting on a bulletin board for a certain period of time with a definitive departure uh, date of when you're going to okay. be submitting. So I'd like to see that corrected. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you. Just, Madam Chair, while we're on that, just uh, I actually received the training as well. So Ms. Rivera and Ms. Tortoise, as well as myself, received the training, not only those two. Right. Thank you. It's another correction. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Agenda item number B, DPW, Councillor Vandal. Madam Chair, I have no report, but we're going to have a meeting this Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. in the Rice Conference Room. Thank you. Okay. Madam Chair. Councillor Langevin. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, through you to Councilor Vandal, uh, could you please possibly add an agenda item for that, for um, Chatham Street drainage and stuff like that? We've got Abe it on. Is, we've, Abe has been asking. We've and got I it on there. It's already on there? It's already on there. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Agenda item number 5C, Education and Human Services. Councilor Clements. Thank you, Madam Chair. A meeting of the HS subcommittee was held Tuesday, May 29th, 2012, in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were myself, Councillor Marcucci, Councillor Nicola, Citizens Member Michael Jaynes. Also in attendance were the Town Manager, Terry Wiggins, and Sean Moriarty. Called the meeting at 6.30. Agenda item one, discuss and vote to approve change order number six in the amount of $37,577. Revised total as requested by Consigli Construction and recommended by Jocelyn Lesser and Associates for the Middle High School Project. Mr. Clark stated these changes are to continue the process of finishing the school project. A motion was made by Councilor Marcucci and seconded by Mr. Jaynes with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve change order number six in the amount of $37,577, revised total as requested by Consigli Construction and recommended by Jocelyn Lesser and Associates for the Middle High School Project. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, 4-0. Agenda item number two, discuss and vote to approve the proposal of the lowest bidder for the PC servers and wireless for the middle high school and to submit to town council for ratification at its next meeting on Monday, June 4th, 2012. 
Mr. Wiggins stated bids were open today. Three bid groups were involved. Bid group one was for equipment and services. The low bidder was Wally Computer Associates with a bid of $146,334.93. Bid group two was for server technology. The low bidder was HIQ Computers with a bid of $76,859.44. Bid group three was for tablet technology. The low bidder was HIQ Computers with a bid of $189,213.95. The total for the three low bids is $412,439.37, which is $20,411 $20, under budget. Mr. Wiggins also explained about the Arrowhive purchase for wireless network. The purchase is being made under state contract. The pricing is slightly more than budgeted for. 45,000 versus 36,500. With the savings in the above bid, there's more than enough to offset the added cost there. Mr. Wiggins recommends the acceptance of the above bidders. And there was a lot of discussion in regard to the information that we received and um, the building committee's recommendations for all of this and for all of these changes. So we felt very comfortable recommending them to um, the council. A motion was made by Councillor Marcucci, seconded by Mr. James, with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the contracts <coughs> with, one, Wally Computer Associates for, Associates for Computing Equipment and Services Technology Group Bid Portion of Bid Number 2012-10 in an amount not to exceed $146,334.93 for the new school project pending final bid review, reference checks, and school building committee approval. Number two, HIQ Computer Inc. for server technology group bid portion of bid number 2012-10 in an amount not to exceed $76,859.44 for the new school project pending final bid review, reference checks, and school building committee approval. Number three, HIQ Computer Inc. for tablet technology group bid portion of bid number 2012-10 in an amount not to exceed $189,245 for the new school project pending final bid review, reference checks, and school building committee approval. And number four, Wally Computer Associates be awarded the Arrowhive Wireless Network contract to be purchased off of a state purchasing contract in an amount not to exceed $45,007 for the new school project. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, 4-0. A motion to adjourn was made by Councillor Marcucci, seconded by Mr. Jaynes. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, 4-0. We adjourn the meeting <coughs> at 7.55. We're currently in, uh, working on a potential meeting for the 12th, Tuesday the 12th. And uh, once we know whether or not it's necessary uh, with agenda items, then we will be posting that as needed for public uh, information. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. D, Planning and Development. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have no report and no meeting scheduled at this time. Thank you. E, Protection of Persons and Property. Council Landman. Thank you, Madam Chair. A meeting of the Protection of Persons and Property Subcommittee was held on Tuesday, May 22, 2012, in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were Chairman <coughs> Landman, committee members, Council Regis, citizen, uh, citizens members, Roger Cowett, and Monique Manor. Also in attendance were Council Nicola, Council Clements, Council Vandal, Town Manager Clark, Police Chief Charette, Santonio Marcucci, Luis Torres, Leonard Bean, Adriana <coughs> DiPietro, Shane Woodson, Thomas Pomerino, Ryan Chase, Steve <coughs> Belros, Sean Moriarty, and Estelle Cowett. Chairman Landry called the meeting to order at 633. Agenda item number one, vote to confirm the appointment of Leonard R. Bean of Southridge as a police officer for the town of Southridge pending se successful completion of physical by town physician. Mr. Clark gave an overview and stated Chief Charette went through the civil service list and an in extensive interview checks were conducted on all candidates. Mr. Clark gave a brief overview of Mr. Bean's qualifications, experience, and education. Councilor Regis asked for an overview of the process in selecting the candidates, and Chief Charette explained the procedures following the extensive search <coughs> conducted to qualify the candidates. Mr. Clark explained his part in the interview process. Councilor Regis questioned the word pending successful completion of a physical by the town physician. 
Chief Charette explained that these officers would be on the desk duty because no academy training would be available until either the fall or winter and would have to pass a physical by the town physician before they can start working for the town. Council Lantern stated he was looking for candidates to have a high level of integrity and respect for this town, whether on duty or off duty. Councilor Nicola addressed the candidates and stated her desire for high integrity in these candidates. Councilor Lantern asked Mr. Clark and Chief Charette if they're both 100% comfortable with the appointment of these three candidates. Both stated yes. A motion was made by Council Regis, second by Mr. Cowett, with a favorable recommendation to Council to conform the appointment of Lennon R. Bean of the Southbridge Police Office for the Town of Southbridge pending successful completion of the physical by the town physician. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, four to nothing. Agenda item number two, vote to confirm the appointment of Louis Torres of Sturbridge as a police officer of the Town of Southbridge pending successful completion of the physical by the town physician. Mr. Clark gave a brief overview of Mr. Torres, qualifications, experience, and education. Mr. Clark recommended Ms. Torres for the position of police officer. Chief Charette agreed with the manager. A motion was made by Council Regis, second by Mr. Cowett, with a favorable recommendation to Council to confirm the appointment of Louis Torres of Sturbridge as a police officer for the town of South uh, pending successful completion of the physical by the town physician. Vote by show of hands. All in favor, four nothing. Agenda item number three, vote to confirm the appointment of Ryan K. Chase of Southbridge as a police officer for the town of Southbridge, pending successful completion of a physical by the town physician. Mr. Clark uh, also gave a brief overview of Mr. Chase's qualifications, experience, and education. Mr. Clark recommended Mr. Chase for the police officer's position. Chief Charette agreed with the manager. A motion was made by Council Regis, second by Mr. Cowett with a favorable recommendation to the council to confirm the appointment of Ryan K. Chase of Southridge as a police officer for the town of South pending successful completion of physical by the town physicians. Uh, vote by show of hands, four to nothing, all in favor. Uh, prior to the start of the next agenda item, Chief Charette removed the appointment of Council Rhonda from the list. Agenda item number four, Vote to approve the following five individuals to the Southridge Auxiliary Police for a three-year term to expire June 30th, 2015. Adriana DiPietro, Southridge, Mass. Kimberly Jesnick, Sturbridge, Mass. Santonio Marcucci, Southridge, Mass. Thomas Palmarino, Southridge, Mass. Mr. Clark said, this is the first step in a career of law, law enforcement for the candidates and has confidence on the chief recommendation of these candidates. Council Langevin stated he would like to have an in-depth check of candidates' integrity and background even at the auxiliary level. Sergeant uh, Belrose stated we presently have 22 auxiliary police officers. Chief Charette said we would like to have between 25 and 30 auxiliary Officers. A motion was made by Council Regis, second by Mr. Cowett, with the favorable recommendation to Council to vote to approve the following four individuals to the Southridge Police for a three year term to expire June 30th, 2015. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, four to nothing. Agenda item number five discuss sidewalk issues by the Golden Greek area. Council Landry said this will be going through the DPW subcommittee, but he feels a safety issue, and therefore, is being brought up at PPP subcommittee. Council Landrin said he has seen the area and there is a valid concern. Mr. Clark said we have limited resources in Chapter 90 funding to fix sidewalks and streets, but he will uh, meet with Mr. Daly to see what he can get done. Mr. Clark wants the council to be aware that when one project is done, another project has to go undone because of the funding is just not there. Some of this area by Brookside Terrace is State Road and part is Town Road. Mr. Clark said he would meet with Mr. Daly and provide an update. A motion to adjourn was made by Council Regis and second by Ms. Manor. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, four to nothing. Meeting adjourned 
at 7.45 p.m. Respectfully submitted. Evelyn Rivera, recording clerk. Uh, Madam Chair, I do have a meeting scheduled for next Monday, 7 p.m. in the Rice Conference Room, uh, so we can hopefully move forward on the uh, fire chief, so there will be a discussion and a vote so we can send it to the full council, um, hopefully June 18th. And that's all I have at this time, but obviously these police officers that I just read are coming before the council tonight. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, agenda item number six, chairwoman, chairwoman's announcements. <laughs> I just um, want to briefly state that this past week was a whirlwind of activity involving the town. We had the Memorial Day Parade, which was well attended. And then we had, on May 31st, the Business Expo that <coughs> took place at the uh, Hotel Conference Center. Again, well attended, appeared to be quite a success. On June 1st was the community meal at the community center, well attended, a big success, thanks to everybody who volunteered their time. June 2nd was the Southbridge Fest. Unfortunately, the weather didn't cooperate, but there were quite a few hardy souls who showed up and set up their tents and their tables. And then June 3rd, yesterday, was the Southbridge High School graduation. I'm exhausted just re re going through it again. Anyway, those were the things that did take place this week, um, for any of you who were not aware. And um, I was able to attend all of them, and I want to say that I had a great time, and I was very happy and proud of our community. I'm going to move on. There's quite a few things I believe the manager has to go over with you, so I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Clark on agenda <coughs> item number seven. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just for some of the items, uh, I'll try to work my way through. Uh, we do have a free rabies clinic uh, this Saturday, June 9th, from 9 a.m. to 11 at the old DPW barn at 62 Pleasant Street. Uh, Second Chance Animal Shelter will be providing free rabies vaccines for dogs and cats. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, please look for that event. Also, um, just to kind of follow up a little bit on the chairwoman's <coughs> announcements, I just wish to, uh, I did attend the Business Expo on Thursday and just wish to uh, express my appreciations to uh, Mr. Sotilli, who had brought a contingent from out of, out of country to look and, and give us an opportunity to try to sell the community to the, um, to the people that were the potential investors. Also, um, on the tornado activity, I did, um, I, I had a uh, press show up on my door the other day, and I realized I had not fully disclosed this to the council, only because I was wor still working on it, that uh, the town had, in fact, been officially announced by the various politicians in, in Boston that the town had received $150,000 towards tornado funding. Uh, and when we actually went to track down the specific details of that, come to find out that the details was it was an allocation up to 150,000 for federally, federal, federally funded roadways, which basically restricts our use of that funding to two roadways, Clemens Hill and to Pleasant Street, because those two roadways have the federal designation because they both lead to the airport. And approximately probably 10 to 15% of the total damage from the tornado is in that area. So I thought that the money would be more open to other areas so we could do some work on Charlton Street, and that has not been the case. Uh, a governor's representative attended the meeting on Friday night, and I expressed my um, interest in trying to have that uh, interpretation liberalized so we could put the money more to where the need is. And I did follow up over the weekend with an email to, um, to the lady that represented the governor. I just, on, I did go to the graduation on Sunday as well, and just, I, I thought that the, uh, the kids in the community was very impressed by the, uh, the community itself for the amount of scholarships that are given. And some of the kids were going to fairly good universities. Uh, I think one of them was going to WPI, which is a, uh, a, good, a good school. So I, I think that uh, the community really should take pride in itself for the accomplishments of its, um, of its youth. A couple other items. Uh, the last day to register to vote for the upcoming local election. The local election is going to be Tuesday, June 26, but the last day to register to vote is Wednesday, this Wednesday, June 6, and the town clerk's office will be open until 8 p.m. So if you have an interest in voting in the June 26 election, you have until Wednesday, 
June 6 until 8 p.m. To, to go down and register. Just uh, three other things. Uh, one, we have received some material from uh, the Casella Corporation. Uh, we had put in several requests to them to have when trucks come in and they try to put loads in that aren't supposed to be there, that we would rather have a more detailed process for them to follow. And actually they did come up and implemented a what they call a waistband spotter protocol penalties. And the first offense is a verbal warning to the customer. The second offense is written warning uh, with signed acknowledgement. And the third offense is a $250 fine per load in all subsequently rejected loads. So I do wish to just appreciate the Casella folks that we had raised that issue of having a, a more deliberative process and they did follow up with that uh, to put that into place. Also, I did receive some material from our charter communications that they will be upgrading uh, some of the uh, digital television packages uh, here in the community, and it, it appears that they'll be available uh, June 25, 2012. So uh, they, I'm sure they'll send mailers to uh, individual residents, but just uh, for informational purposes, they are expanding some of their, their offerings. And lastly, uh, this actually just came in this afternoon, um, and this I think was a spin-off from the Business Expo uh, that was held, that I received a call from a, um, and I have to admit, I, I have not watched this show, but there's a, a group that does a show called Today in America, and they were looking for uh, best places to live and work, and we hit their radar screen, and they called uh, to go through some of the details of doing the show, uh, it would be probably a five-minute segment in, a, in another larger show or a half-hour segment show. Uh, but they are interested, and in, for the town, one of the benefits would be that we get a showing, and it would be aired uh, one time nationally and nine times, 19 times regionally. Uh, there is a, a cost associated with it, and we do need to decide how we want to do that. I am in the process of getting information, but I thought maybe with the downtown partnership and the Make Southbridge Home campaign, that that is something that the town should may give some consideration to, to uh, expand our horizons to uh, show ourselves not just in the local marketplace, but in a larger marketplace. And to that end, the, the last, I did have a, a young lady from the Worcester Business Journal come out and she is currently working on two stories uh, involving the town of Southbridge. One is in regards to the buildings that we have for sale uh, throughout the community, and the second one was the industrial park. Uh, has an interest in doing a story on the industrial park, and the Worcester Business Journal covers the 495 belt and a, a larger area of Worcester County, so hopefully that uh, raises the awareness level of the uh, significant opportunities that are present in the town of Southbridge and uh, hopefully that helps to uh, continue to move the town forward. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Okay, moving on to agenda number eight, which is a swearing in presentation. And we're not ready for that tonight. So we're gonna move on to agenda item number nine, Citizens Forum. Any citizens wishing to come forward, please do so by stating your name and address. Butler, 35 Brookside Road. Doesn't sound like it's on. Can anybody hear me? It's going okay, now. Okay, good. Um, just to follow up on what you just said, Mr. Clark, uh, about the state funded money for, I guess, only being able to be allotted for certain roads. Is there something we can do as citizens? I mean, I'd be more than happy to go around and get signatures, anything we could, for the governor or whatever. I mean, the pictures, anything we can do, I mean, it kind of seems wrong to single out certain certain areas. Through, through you, Madam Chair. I mean, one of the things that, that was interesting that I thought about going to that event on Friday was that originally uh, the town was not designated as part of the FEMA uh, award. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, some individual lobbying by members of the council, uh, obviously myself as an advocate for the town. And that did make a difference. So yeah, if you wanted to put something together, I can okay. give you some of the contact information and we can see what we can do. Okay. But at that event, I did mention to uh, Senator Moore, Representative Durant, and the, uh, the young lady from the governor's office, mm -hmm. my concerns that the money should be allocated 
the larger impact area, I think, was really Charlton Street and Worcester Street, yeah. much more than, than yeah. Pleasant Street. I'm sure all the neighbors would speak for me, I mean, with me on the, uh, the drainage and all that, you know, I mean, you've all heard it from me before, but yeah, I mean, if I can go, I'll work with you if we have to, I'll stop by the town hall, see what I need to do, but if signatures, anything I can do, let me know, because... That'd be appreciated. Um, I appreciate you guys working on that for us. Um, I want to specifically thank Ms. L uh, Langevin and um, Ms. Clements for making me feel pretty welcome the other night at the, the cookout. I didn't get to talk to everyone there, but... Um, Kind of a mixed emotion night, so um, that's about all I got on that. But um, thank you for, I'll, I'll keep in touch on that, um, do what I can. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody else wish to come forward? Uh, John Pulaski, Old Woodstock <laughs> Road. I wasn't going to come down tonight until I read or heard on the television one of the subcommittee reports, and I know brevity is important, you can't put in all the details, but I happened to see that meeting on video on uh, former Councillor O'Brien's ozone site. And to me, the biggest news I've heard in Southbridge for the last, oh shucks, year and a half, two years, was the information revealed by Mr. Clark that uh, relating to the problems connected to what some of us called, and we were criticized for this, a landfill driveway the road that was held up uh, by the council for about a year, uh, five to four vote, and apparently what was said back then, that there was too much of an uh, angle on the road and it wasn't wide enough in places, is, is did I hear you correctly, uh, Mr. Clark, through the, the chairman, that the, there's some problems with the road being used for commercial purposes? No, I, I think what I stated that night is that there is some additional roadway reconfiguration that we're looking at doing in the future. So it's not required, really, to bring business in? Because at the time, we had factories and jobs that were promised, and now you know, we spent, what was it, $6 million on the road, and now we're selling the lots for under 300000 That That wouldn't work in, in business. We, I hear up here that we're going to run the town like a business. But when you spend over $6 million on the road, and you sell the lots for 300000 you know, that's, that, that's not a really good investment. And uh, there were jobs promised. I, I heard from here that there were def definite company coming in here from this dais, but never heard a correction from this dais. The company wasn't coming in. And, you know, I, I know it's good to bring in business, and Mr. Chernisky should be praised for putting that meeting together, especially Mr. Satilli, for bringing, you know, for, for, for the, having the business meeting. And uh, there's a lot of good things going on in town. I heard a council recently say people are always putting down the town. We're really normally putting down things done by the town government, but some good things were done this past week. That parade was great. The flowers are still out there. Those uh, prisoners of war that fought for our country in this town, they're, they're still being honored. But uh, in that uh, uh, event for the uh, victims of the uh, tornado, there's, people should be pat on the back for that. That was well attended. But on the other hand, there's something, there's something else going on. Uh, there's uh, some other stories in town. I don't want to bring them up but that aren't being reported in the media, that are major stories. And we've got, a, we've got a, a, a road up there that, uh, you know, we had people getting elected talking about all the jobs that are coming, and now, now we're selling it for, uh, selling the lots for 300000 Perhaps the town should hold on to them when the landfill stink goes away and the uh, health issues go away. Perhaps we could sell those lots for uh, double, triple the money that uh, we are, we're getting. I mean, it's like we're selling them on the cheap. Uh, and and I, I don't like that. I think we should sell it for top dollar. When uh, the people at the, from the landfill, the Casella people, told the Board of Health that there's about five to seven years left to that landfill. So if we just hold on to that land for five to seven years, I think we can get three times more money for it. But uh, you have a lot of business. A lot of stuff gets put on the agenda in June. I've used up close to my five minutes, so I'll get away from the mic now. But I just, I, I encourage you to hold off on selling those lots until we can get more money for them. Thank you. Would anybody else wish to come forward? Moving on to agenda item number 10, vote to confirm the appointment of Leonard R. Bean of Southbridge as police officer for the town of Southbridge, pending successful completion of a physical by the town physician. So moved. Second. 
Any discussion? Councillor McDonald. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, through you to the police chief. I have some concerns, uh, not with the candidates themselves, just the process. Um, I've seen the, the list that the names and the priorities, and there are, seems to me to be people who have experience in the education and even the academy that are ahead of some of these candidates, and I just want to ask the chief why we would bypass them uh, when we have the established list and, and the intent of the civil service process through the priority is to present to us qualified applicants based upon currency and relevancy and, uh, and basically a measure of their competence, and that's how they're rank ordered. If you'd yeah. like to repeat what you said the other night in the subcommittee meeting, that would be fine. Um, Thank you. <clears throat> the, the actual list we get is, is simply an examination. Uh, that's one of the criteria we look at, but there are dozens of others. And what we tried to do, and we did extremely thoroughly, was to try to bring you the best candidates overall within the scope of what we can do under civil service law. So that's what we're presenting tonight. Okay, thank you. Any other further? Would you like to, do you have any words you'd like to add? Well, I, uh, just uh, as, as was stated from the subcommittee, uh, Mr. Clark and I went through an extensive, ex exhaustive process, uh, did everything I believe can be done uh, to bring the best candidates for you this evening. Thank you. Do you wish to add something? Just to, uh, I think that the first candidate, uh, Mr. Bean, has uh, proven himself to be a, uh, an exemplary uh, person that has moved through the, and progressed through uh, what one would consider to be the process to become a police officer. He is a, a police officer currently in Holland and has been for the last two years, as well as he's been on the auxiliary and promoted up through the auxiliary. Uh, so I think that he has uh, exhibited uh, the kind of behavior and the experience that we're looking for to have him make the successful transition to become a, uh, a full-time police officer. And I do recommend him uh, wholeheartedly. Okay, thank you. Any further? Could we have a roll call, please? Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? I'm sorry, Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Living Good? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Congratulations. Gender item number 11. <clears throat> Vote to confirm wise. the appointment of Luis Torres of Sturbridge as police officer for the town of Southbridge pending successful completion of a physical by the town physician. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Would you like to? Just a, uh, a little bit of an overview on Mr. Torres. Um, I like to think that he's a, uh, a bootstraps guy, uh, someone that has worked his way and earned a lot. Uh, he did go on to get a, a, a degree in criminal justice and Spanish for business from uh, Worcester State University and has been a uh, active person and similar to Mr. Bean has obviously put forward uh, the skills that would lead one to believe that he should be able to make the transition uh, to be a police officer in the town of Southbridge and he is also bilingual so to those folks in the community which is about probably one third of uh, the folks that are that speak Spanish uh, this is a, an excellent opportunity to make sure that we can effectively communicate uh, with all the population of the town. So I wholeheartedly uh, recommend Mr. Torres as uh, a police officer here in the community. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Councillor McDonald. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just to clarify too, these officers that replace people who have departed to fill vacancies, not new positions. Yeah, that's a good question. They're all replacement of existing vacancies. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can we have a roll call, please? Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Congratulations.
Agenda item number 12, vote to confirm the appointment of Ryan K. Chase as police officer for the town of Southbridge pending successful completion of a physical by the town physician. So moved. Second. Just a, uh, a brief overview on Mr. Chase, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, I believe Mr. Chase has proven himself that he has a background in criminal justice. Uh, he wanted to make sure that he was able to establish himself, so he went into the private sector, has progressed very well in the private sector. Uh, he is someone that has some uh, experience that I think it's good to have a good blend of uh, talents to bring into the police force. I do believe that this gentleman has shown that he has some managerial capabilities, and I think he would be an asset to the police force here in the community. Thank you. Do I have any, any discussion here? Roll call, please. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Eight yes. Congratulations. Agenda item number 13, vote to approve the following four individuals to the Southbridge Auxiliary Police for a three-year term to expire June 30th, 2015. So moved. Second. Okay, I'd like to read off the names. Adriana DiPietro, Southbridge, Mass. Kimberly Jesnack, Sturbridge, Mass. Santino Marcucci, Southbridge, Mass., and Thomas Palmarino, Southbridge, Mass. Is there anything, any discussion here? Mr. Manager, would you like to? I was going to defer to the chief on this one. Okay, thank you. Well, we currently have a, a very active auxiliary force. There's 22 active personnel right now, and uh, several of uh, those are retired personnel from the police department. They literally give us countless hours, uh, approximately 1,800 hours last year in voluntary service. Uh, they just do a fantastic job for us, and I think all four of these uh, young people will be great candidates to uh, assist the community. Thank you, Chief. Did you have something, Councilor? Did you? I did. Thank you, Madam Chair. Are we going to be voting on these individually? Would you prefer that we do? I would. Thank okay. You. I understand. Okay. Councilor. Thank you, I'm sure. I just want to thank uh, the chief and the town manager for the information that we received at the subcommittee meeting that is very thorough, very well uh, explained to us in terms of the process this time around. And uh, we're, I believe we're satisfied with, with everyone that you've put forward here. And again, I just want to give you um, thanks for really expanding that process and making sure that we felt comfortable with these appointments. And certainly, we, I'm sure we made it very clear to everybody that we're not afraid or not um, in any way uh, taken aback to, to take the necessary steps to do what's right for this community when it comes to our police officers and, and our auxiliary or anybody else. So um, do, do good work for us. You'll be around a long time. I, I thank you for bringing that up. I've got to say, uh, Detective Sergeant Carlos Dingy and Detective Michael Stevens did, uh, Michael, <laughs> Michael Sullivan, thank you, <laughs> did a, uh, uh, a wonderful job for us. They did a fantastic job with the background pieces and uh, were extremely thorough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Anything, anybody else have anything? Just to touch upon what Councillor Clements just said, I, I feel very confident in my votes this evening based on all that's been done to bring you forward. You must be very special. Okay, we're going to start with the first vote will be for Adriana DiPietro from Southbridge, Mass. Could we have a roll call, please? Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Limigood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Kimberly Jesnek, Sturbridge, Mass. Roll call, please. Councilor Vandal? Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. 
Eight yes. Thank you. Santino Marcucci, Southbridge, Mass. Councilor well, Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Abstain. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? I'm sorry. She's not here. I, mean, I will get that. She's still not she here. She really isn't coming. Sorry. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Spinelli? Yes. <laughs> Councilor Vandal? Yes. Um, Thank you. Thomas Pomerino, Southbridge, Mass. Sorry. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you, and congratulations to all of you. Thank you uh, very much to the manager and the council for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item number 14, vote to confirm the appointment of Evelyn Rivera as municipal hearing officer for a one-year term effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2013. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Councilor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> um, I think that as a in the organization, we need to be consistent, and I think that these positions should have been advertised. Uh, it's been relayed to me that uh, uh, the incumbent was interested, and, and I feel didn't have an opportunity. I feel other people were talking about uh, an amount of money that's available uh, for this position, and to me, it's no, like no other position. It has a spe set of special skill sets and whatnot, but it should be advertised, and anybody who's out there should have a fair and equitable manner to, um, to be able to bid on these additional duties and so therefore I'm not uh, that's one element of it the second element is um, in the discussion in the subcommittee it came up that the pay would come from the fines collected mm -hmm. and while the general law that establishes 21d says that it will inure to the town in a manner that they see fit the special legislation on the chapter 115 of the acts of 2009 says specifically that the funds must go into the general account so based upon those two things, I'm just inclined to vote no on these. Not anything against the individual specifically, but the process, uh, and I think it should have been advertised. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Anybody else have any discussion on this? Or on the second one, because they're identical? Okay. Can we have a roll call, please? Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? No. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Seven yes, one no? Thank you. Fifteen, vote to confirm the appointment of Yvonne Tortoise, Yvonne Tortoise as Municipal Hearing Officer for a one-year term effective July 1st, 2012 through June 30th, 2013. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion on this? Roll call, please. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? No. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Seven yes, one no. Thank you. 16, vote to reappoint Karen Harnoys as Town Accountant Finance Director for a five-year term effective August 25th, 2012 through August 24th, 2017, and to ratify updated employment agreement. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? But I'll defer to the manager. Um, yes. We did send out an update. Uh, just two things that I would like to make note of. One is uh, by statute, Chapter 41, Section 55, it does allow the discretion of the appointing authority, in this case would be the town manager, obviously subject to ratification by the council. A person may be appointed to the position of town accountant for a term of not more than five years and until a successor is qualified. So this one does have a specific statutory uh, authorization that does allow for up to five-year appointment. And then the two other elements, there was some concern that came up at the subcommittee meeting and we did put in red in the, in the materials that on the additional week vacation that would not kick in until the second year of the appointment. 
and then also the maximum of 150 days for the accumulation of sick time was actually put in there. That should have been in there before. So we did make those two changes. And like I said, it's subcommittee, and I, I will repeat here, um, that there are several members. Uh, I like to say that I get to, to get to do all the fun stuff, but there's a lot of people that have to do the work behind the scenes, and Karen Harnoy's is really one of the key components to the financial success of this community, and having her and being able to retain her, I believe, is probably crucial to the uh, well-being of the community, and I just think that uh, this is one that is fundamental to good government and fundamental to the financial well-being of the community. So I wholeheartedly uh, recommend that, that this appointment go through with the five years. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Councillor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. In my experience in uh, municipal government as well as teaching uh, labor relations as an adjunct professor at Anna Maria, I view this a little differently. The general law notwithstanding it allows for five years. I understand that a contract is to protect both parties, the person who's being contracted with and the entity contracting them. Uh, under Chapter 150E, I think I'm, I'm very big about consistency. And I don't ever think that we should just tailor make situations for people. It, it has nothing to do about the people. It, because what we set here is going to be a precedent for other contracts. And under general law, with our union employees, the, the MGL limits them to three years. And I think three years is basically, it, well, it's the standard, it's the average, uh, and it, to me it's a good amount of time. Anything less than that is not good for the individual who's contracted. Anything more than that works against the entity known as the town uh, in this case. Uh, so I can't, it, it has nothing to do with the individual again because now we're going to be looking at other contracted employees and we're going to have to make the determination whether it's three years or five years and there's going to be, I think, an inclination to elevate them all to five years, which I don't think is in the best interest of the town. So therefore, I make a motion to amend agenda item number 16 that in the following manner, strike the number five, replace it with the n number three in August 24, 2017 to 2015, making it a three-year contract. Do I have a second for that? Okay, can I have a roll call, please? Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? No. Councilor Spinelli? No. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? No. Councilor Langevin? No. Council Livingood? No. Council Marcucci? No. Two yes, six no. Thank you. Now can I, um, if there is no further discussion, could I have a roll call on the original? Council Nicola? Yes. Council Spinelli? Yes. Council Vandal? Yes. Council Clemens? Yes. Council Langevin? Yes. Council Livingood? Yes. Council Marcucci? Yes. Council McDonald? No. Seven yes, one no. Thank you. 17, vote to confirm the appointment of attorney Michael E. Scott of Nutter, McLennan, and Fish, LLP, as special attorney representing the town in regard to the landfill extension agreement. So moved. Okay. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? No. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Seven yes, one no. 18, vote to confirm the appointment of attorney John Giorgio of Copelman and Page for the, purpose of assisting, for the purpose of assisting in the location of the solar leases that the town may engage or enter, enter into at various locations to be determined. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Vandal? No. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Seven yes, one no. Thank you. 19, vote to approve the signing of the warrant for the annual town election scheduled for Tuesday, June 26, 2012. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. And Councilor Vandal? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Vote, uh, agenda item number 20, vote to accept the provisions of chapter 176 
of the Acts of 2011, Section 29 and 30, thereby increasing the minimum monthly allowance contained in General Law, Chapter 32, Section 12, 2D, from $250 to $500 per month. So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Council Langevin? Yes. Council Livingood? Yes. Council Marcucci? Yes. Council McDonald? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Council Spinelli? Yes. Council Vandal? Yes. Council Clements? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 21. Ordered that $150,000 is appropriated for the purchase of self-contained breathing apparatus that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the town manager, is authorized to borrow $150,000 under Chapter 44 of the General Laws and to issue bonds or notes thereof. Two thirds of a roll call vote is required. So Here. moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Councilor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. This um, agenda item is just allowing the town manager to borrow, correct? Correct. This will go to subcommittee. Correct. Okay. We're doing these in two stages. This is basically the borrowing authorization tonight, and when the actual equipment is purchased, then that will come back through subcommittee. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Anybody else? Any questions? Roll call, please. Council Livingood? Yes. Council Marcucci? Yes. Council McDonald? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Council Spinelli? Yes. Council Vandal? Yes. Council Clements? Yes. Council Langevin? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. 22, ordered that $90,000 is appropriated for library improvements, including improvements and repairs to the retaining wall, parking lot, and other interior improvements. That to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the town manager, is authorized to borrow $90,000 under Chapter 44 of the General Laws and to issue bonds or notes, therefore. So moved. Also, second. a two-third roll call vote required. So I've got a roll. Call. I've got a motion, and a, motion and a second. Thank yes. you. Any discussion? Nothing. Can we have a roll call, please? Councilor Marcucci. Yes. Councilor McDonald. Yes. Councilor Nicola. Yes. Councilor Spinelli. Yes. Councilor Vandal. Yes. Councilor Clements. Yes. Councilor Langevin. Yes. Councilor Livingood. Yes. Eight yes. Thank you. 23, ordered that $125,000 is appropriated for the purchase of a backhoe, that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the town manager, is authorized to borrow $60,000 under Chapter 44 of the General Laws and to issue bonds or notes, therefore, and $65,000 to be funded from sewer retained earnings. I also need two-thirds roll call vote here. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Madam Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Councillor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I have a couple of issues with this particular agenda item. Uh, it's, I know we, the un, I've read the material on this particular backhoe, but it's my understanding there is another backhoe that the town owns that is in the water department. Is that not correct? Mm -hmm. in, in what year would that one be? I don't remember the specific year. I think that the one that was replaced, and, and this was kind of vetted out at the uh, subcommittee, but the, the water department backhoe is a, uh, a smaller unit and doesn't help like, with snowplow operations. This is actually a larger unit that does more highway and sewer type operations, and they both happen to be. You're, you're absolutely correct. We just recently replaced a water department one. I believe this one is uh, 1990. I believe it was, it's either 86 or 90. Okay. The vintage is old. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, just a, a little bit further on that then. In looking at the our operational hours on this particular piece of equipment at 10,000 hours, while that seems like a lot over 22 years, that equates to basically 455 hours a, a year, which basically equates to eight hours and three quarters a week. And the other problem I have with this is when we start, I've said this before, while the law may allow us to reach in and charge sewer retained earnings because we use so much of it for the sewer, it affects the sewer rates. And the particular problem I have with that is that piece of legislation, in my mind as I understand it, is designed when you have a private entity running the water and sewer because they're a private entity and you want to go back and charge them back. And they, yes, would pass that on to the end user. But in this particular case where we are the owners, 
where basically when we have about 80 to 90 percent of town residents who are on water or on sewer, that means they're getting hit for this twice. They've got to pay it for their regular taxes and then they get hit possibly later on in a, in a sewer rate increase or a water rate increase. And when you look at the hours involved and how much this particular piece of equipment over its lifespan history, uh, it doesn't equate to, I wouldn't say 50% of the time is working for the sewer retained earnings. There should be a proportional amount borrowed for each when we're looking at $125,000 expenditure. And I already stated my problems with a previous purchase within DPW. So these are the main problems that I have with this particular funding mechanism and will not be supporting it tonight. Thank you, Madam Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Clark. Just uh, two things. It, it's 22 years old, so I guess that is 1990. In, in terms of one of the things on this piece of equipment, um, the backhoe itself, when it rotates, doesn't stop. So this is actually a safety hazard to the folks that operate it. <coughs> to, the, to the point about enterprise versus uh, general fund budgeting, uh, this is, when, when I met with the DPW director, I said, what is the approximate usage of this piece of equipment? And he said it's generally used about 50-50. So it's used more by the highway department in the wintertime for snowplow operations and used more by the sewer department during uh, the spring and summertime when we have an opportunity to replace the, uh, the pipes, which we recently did at the, um, at the, where the RMV is. We had to do that, and that work was done in-house. The folks from Veolia only do the labor. We actually supply all the parts and materials and the equipment for them to do that. So in, in terms of this, the allocation that the DPW director came back with was 60,000 from, from general fund or from the highway and 65,000 from the sewer department retained earnings based upon the anticipated usage of the uh, piece of equipment. But this is a piece of equipment that is dangerous to our, to our employees. Council Clements. Thank you. And I'll just point out one more point of information that we have with us. Um, in the past four years, they've spent $8,000 in parts to keep it running, never mind the man hours um, that it also took to repair that. So you can do the math on that, a couple thousand dollars a year on top of the cost um, to own the machine. So I think it's a good purchase for the town. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Vandal. Uh, through you to the town manager. Don't you think we ought to wait on this appropriation of $125,000, seeing this is on my agenda? It's one of my agenda items for Wednesday evening, and we can discuss how many hours and how many that we have and, you know, the whole nine yards. Yeah, fair question into Councillor Marcucci's point earlier. This is really just the borrowing authorization that's right. focused. I know we're doing the, the retained earnings transfer too in this, but we will not buy a piece of equipment until it's vetted out by the DPW subcommittee. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, anybody else? Then move forward with the uh, roll call, please. Councillor McDonald? No. Councillor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Seven yes, one no. Thank you. Agenda item number 24, vote to approve change order number <laughs> six in the amount of $37,577 revised total as requested by Consigli Construction and recommended by Jocelyn Lesser and Associates for the Middle High School Project. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I just want to say that the next four, five items, um, at the time that they were brought before the subcommittee, had not gone before the building committee. They have now all gone before the building committee and have been approved by the building committee. Um, did you want to add something? Yeah, when you're done. That's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just uh, two things. One is on the change order, uh, which is this is change order number six, uh, the 37,577 primarily was driven by uh, the, the school administration was trying to find what was the best application for redesigning the shop area. Originally, it was just designed to be a, a wood shop and they wanted to do a little bit more. So they have uh, some additional uh, high-tech equipment in there to be able to do some more uh, modern um, design type concepts. 
so that one of the main drivers for this is that we wanted to make sure that we got the, the program right. And in that program being right, we had to make some adjustments to the building. Um, so that's the primary driver for, for the, um, that change order. And then as you indicated, the next four are related to uh, computer technology. And uh, Terry Wiggins, the school business manager, has graciously decided to stay tonight to be able to respond to any questions in regards to those uh, specific items. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Clark. So we'll dispense with 24 first. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 25, vote to ratify the agreement between the Town of Southbridge and Wally Computer Associates for Computing Equipment and Services Technology Group bid portion of bid number 2012-10 in an amount not to exceed $146,334.93 for the new school project pending final bid review, reference checks, and school building committee approval. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Did you, did you want to give any kind of an overview, Mr. Wiggins, or did you just want to be here in case anyone had any questions? I was here in case anyone had any questions. I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Councillor Spinelli. All of this expenditures for the next four items were originally part of the contract the original estimate and building for the school, correct? Correct. So we are we're not adding anything to the final ultimate cost of what everyone voted on when they approved the school. We are not any adding anything to the original cost of the school. We are adding a great deal to the technology from what was originally planned. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Anyone else? Maybe just to, there were, I believe it was 1.2 million that was uh, allocated for technology and- 1.26, yes. 1.26, and with all these tonight, uh, we're still slightly under that budget by about $10,000, if I mm, recall correctly, 11,000. 11,000 and change. Okay, roll call please. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 26, vote to ratify the agreement between the Town of Southbridge and HIQ Computer Incorporated for the server technology group bid portion of bid number 2012-10 in an amount not to exceed $76,859.44 for the new school project, pending final bid review, reference checks, and school building committee approval. So moved. Second. Any discussion, questions? Councillor Spinelli? We have, basically we have four bids that were let out and we have two groups, or three two groups. Three groups. Well, we have Wally and mm -hmm. HIQ, HIQ, and then back to Wally on the fourth item. Right. These companies certainly, I would assume, through you, with your oversight, have the ability to integrate everything successfully together. That's with my oversight. But there's also, uh, as part of the design group, there's a technology consultant that works as a project manager along with Consigli. Uh, and the architect, and they will be responsible for integrating this all together. Absolutely. Councillor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you, Mr. Wiggins, at the subcommittee meeting, you had mentioned um, that you were in the process of reference checks. Mm -hmm. Have you completed that or near we, completion? We have completed them. Uh, HQ uh, is actually one of the largest companies in the Northeast for both uh, Apple, Acer, Dell, um, they have actually just signed a new um, $15 million contract with the Boston Public Schools. I talked with their technology coordinator who speaks of them very highly. I spoke with the technology coordinator and the business manager for the Cambridge Public Schools. Uh, I know several people in the Cambridge Public Schools. Um, they absolutely would, um, I think the technology coordinator said, I would absolutely die if I did not have H, uh, HiQ 
as he puts it, to deal with. They actually had a building project where HiQ was involved and they had issues with the design consultant for their technology and HiQ stepped in and made sure that all the technology product got delivered and those, that product was ready to go when they were opening their new building. Uh, Acer, I spoke with the folks I know at Acer. I spoke with the folks I know that at Dell. Both spoke very highly, said we have nothing to worry about with this company. They're a top-notch company. Thank you very much. Anything further? Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Can we have a roll call, please? Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Eight yes. Thank you. Agenda item number four, 27, vote to ratify the agreement between the Town of Southbridge and HIQ Computer Incorporated for the Tablet Technology Group bid portion of bid 2012-10 in an amount not to exceed $189,213.95 for the new school project pending final bid review, reference checks, and school building committee approval. So moved. Second. Any questions, discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 28, vote to ratify the agreement between the Town of Southbridge and Wally Computer <laughs> Associates for the Aerohive Wireless Network Contract to be purchased off of a state purchasing contract in an, in an amount not to exceed $45,007 for the new school project pending final bid review reference checks and school building committee approval. So, second. Any discussion? Okay, roll call please. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Mr. Wiggins. Agenda item number 29, vote to accept the layout of commercial drive, including all related and supporting easements, shown as, quote, commercial drive, variable width, 531,185 square feet, 12.20 acres, end quote, on a plan entitled, quote, Plan of Commercial Drive in Southbridge, Massachusetts for the inhabitants of the town of Southbridge dated May 7th, 2012, prepared by Weston and Sampson and Engineers Incorporated, 100 Foxboro Boulevard, Foxboro, Mass, 02035, and in parentheses, the layout plan. <coughs> and further, that the town manager is authorized to acquire or commit any necessary land or interests in land by gift or restrictive covenant as follows. One, three drainage easements in deed book 34304, page 278, on layout plan sheet one and sheet two. <coughs> two, proposed drainage easement A, 734 square feet, on layout plan. Three, proposed drainage easement B, 808 square feet on layout plan. Four, proposed drainage easement C, 32995 square feet, <clears throat> excuse me, on layout plan. Five, deed in fee simple for triangular shaped parcel shown as, quote, proposed easement D, 9700, on layout plan sheet five. And further, that the town manager is authorized and directed to record all necessary documents with the Worcester District Registry of Deeds and to do all necessary acts to complete this road acceptance process. So moved. Second. Councilor Clements. Thank you, through you to the town manager. Mr. Clark, <coughs> how close are we to this actually being um, deem the road at this point? I know there's a timeline. I don't have that in front of me. Yes, thank you for the uh, question. I, I do have the attorney here tonight, uh, Mr. Caprera, uh, if there's any specific questions in terms of the process. But my understanding is uh, with a successful vote tonight, uh, this will be recorded shortly, and we should be um, have legal frontage within a matter of days. Follow up to that? Yep. Thank you. And also, having discussed this through planning and development, and I believe general government and many others, um, 
this puts us much closer now to you getting those RFPs done that uh, we know that there's at least one entity waiting for an RFP to be processed and to be presented to them so they can potentially bid. This so how close are we getting to that particular? This is the second time I'm going to answer this tonight. Well, that's, that's the only reason why I'm smiling. <laughs> I, I was asked a question earlier. Um, it, having this means that we have legal frontage. Uh, the second piece that we're working on is we have the lot configuration that we showed to the members of the, sub, of the uh, subcommittee and the council. Uh, the one thing that we need to do is we need to actually show on there. We have the easement for the uh, electric utility line, but we need to put in the water and sewer easements as well as uh, there's water uh, hydrants. Yeah. So there, those easements are being incorporated into those plans, and once I have a copy of those plans, then that will be the final stage that I need to then do the RFP and send it out. So hopefully in a matter of a couple of weeks, we'll have that out. Of the RFP, the out. RFP out. Yeah. So we've got a fire going under our design people, our, our architect, our engineers that are doing this. These plans they've had for a fire us. to get this thing done for tonight. So okay. yeah, we've right. we've had this so on a fast we'll track. We'll be asking again in a couple of weeks how that's going. Okay. Great. Thank you. Anybody hey, else have any questions <laughs> regarding this? Okay. We have a roll a roll call vote, please. Councilor Livingan? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 30, Councilor's Forum. Councilor Livingood. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. I have nothing tonight except for I want to congratulate those who graduated at the high school and good luck in the real world. <laughs> That's all I have. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Spinelli. I want to um, personally congratulate um, the committee that put on all the activities Thursday night and Friday night, the good work that they did, and uh, congratulate the committee who put on the Southbridge Fest. Um, although the weather certainly didn't help them, um, I think if the weather had been fine, this would have been a glorious occasion. And kudos to the people that work on it. And an interesting question was asked of me. Somebody came up to me, my wife and I were under our red, white, and blue umbrellas there for a number of hours. And um, it was kind of a negative question, and the, the question was, um, so how much has the town invested in this Southbridge Fest? And I happened to be standing next to uh, a number of the committee people that spearheaded this, including um, our wonderful community development director, Sandy Ackley, and I think she took a little bit of umbrage with this, and I, I think it needs to be clarified that um, this committee raises this money on its own. And so to say that the town forfeited money is an untrue statement. And I think what's uh, appropriate is the caliber of the people that were there, especially the last act. I can't remember his name, but he flew up from Atlanta, Georgia to be there and to perform. And when he started to perform the last act, there were approximately eight people there watching him. And this is a man who does um, a number of um, uh, people, but he's primarily, I would say, a uh, Neil Diamond um, honoree does a great job, so good that if you close your eyes, you swear you're at a Neil Diamond concert. But um, this man was there all day long, stayed with all the other groups, patient till the very end. And um, I, I, I can't remember his name, but it shows the quality of the people that they bring in here to entertain us at this fest because he still went through his act and had a great sense of humor when asking for <laughs> if you had any particular favorites that you would like. 
and since I was the only person naming out Neil Diamond songs, and uh, so it was quite, a, quite nice that I got my own private concert there along with my wife and these people. But uh, I think um, the weather aside, the committee that puts this Southbridge Fest on should be praised remarkable. Um, as did all the other functions that went on Thursday and Friday, and it was just, um, it was a, a good weekend for the town of Southbridge. And I was very happy to be a, a small part of that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council. Council Langevin. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just uh, trying not to be redundant, but uh, I do want to congratulate the class of 2012, and good luck on your future endeavors. Congratulations. That's all I have. Thank, thank you. you. Councillor Vandal. Oh, thank you. I never got a reply. This is through you to the town manager. I never got a reply if the construction people are going to come back on Lebanon Hill and fix the lawns near the road. Yeah, you know, I don't remember following up. Let me uh, get a hold of the DPW director and I'll have something in the mail to you if this Friday. I'll make sure I follow up on that. I apologize. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yep. Councillor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just very uh, quickly, in reviewing our weekly reports uh, from Kim Grant, our recycling coordinator, I'd just like to really thank the residents of Southridge because I'm sure you're not aware, but our recycling rate is over 50%, and it's probably the best recycling rate that we've had in a long time. So I'd just like to uh, ask you to continue doing what you're doing. It is working, and the numbers just seem to be increasing. So thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. <coughs> uh, just, I, I know you would <coughs> add to your comments about thanking everybody for the Memorial Day events. Uh, there's a lot that goes in behind that, uh, that Mike Trombley does, the Veterans Agent and the Veterans Council and various groups going out there taking care of the graves, the DPW taking care of the, the um, parks and also the cemetery, Oak Ridge and whatnot, uh, and then a litany of, of people too, a list too long to really name. Just thank everybody for that uh, and their support uh, in honoring those who died in, in combat. Uh, the other thing is I do want to thank also Jim Satilli and the China contingent that came in. They're looking at putting some manufacturing in town. This uh, potential uh, boost could really help us. So uh, he did a great job in, in, in putting that all together, so I wanted to thank him. Uh, also want to congratulate the two graduating classes for, for SHS, Southbridge High School, and Bay Path. I uh, wish them all the best of success. And then uh, finally, I want to just let the people know uh, and the council know that the uh, you may see some press releases on it, but the Democratic and Republican town committees are sponsoring a candidate's debate this weekend for the school committee uh, and town council, uh, people who are running the candidates. And it's going to be, I believe, here in the council chambers on Saturday, June 9th from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. I believe the council candidates go first and the school committee can uh, candidates go second. And it's supposed to be broadcast by cable access. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Councillor Clements. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, earlier I mentioned EHS having a meeting coming up. Um, mainly that's to cover any more building committee requests, but also um, we have not forgotten about the trash fine, trash fine discussion as from our last, uh, the previous meeting that we had two meetings ago. Um, and it's good to hear that the recycling rates are up. Obviously things are working. However, there are still enforcement issues and um, in regards to multifamily dwellings that uh, we don't want to uh, put aside for those uh, landlords and those who have issues with that. So um, that will be something, I just want to let people know that that will be something that will be included on that agenda um, for that meeting. Um, also, let's see here. Um, I just want to mention today, I uh, did have the opportunity to go over to the hospital. They were having a cancer survivor day. And uh, last year it was interrupted by a tornado, unfortunately. And this year it rained. And uh, while it was outside <coughs> under the tents, they're trying to figure out what's going to happen next year. So, uh, but today it was a wonderful outpouring there of support in our community. We have a, an amazing cancer center, as, as many people know, either from experience, but mostly because it's just a, a wonderful addition to our hospital. 
a lot of insight went into um, having that here. Uh, Senator, uh, State Rep. Peter Durant uh, gave a declaration by the governor announcing it uh, a National Cancer Survivor Day for Harrington Healthcare here in Southbridge, and it was well attended. And it, again, our little community, you know, who would have thought all those years ago when a hospital was started basically as a cooperative, when people gave their dollar or their five dollars or their ten dollars to help build that, that hospital, that today we would have uh, such a wonderful asset to our community in a state-of-the-art cancer center. And while um, it's unfortunate that people do have to use it, as they reported a couple of years ago, the numbers were about 250 or so, and now they're up to 400 and um, change in terms of, uh, um, I say visits, not visits, because they've had visits of 7,000, um, but the numbers of, of actual patients and all coming through and using that and uh, hearing the stories today, we're, it was really uh, wonderful to know that we have this, this asset here so that people don't have to travel too far and, um, and it's state of the art and provide such a great service. So kudos to the hospital and the staff and everybody who, um, who helps here in our community. Um, and that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, agenda item number 31, discussion of next meeting date. That's going to be Monday, June 18th, 2012, 7 o'clock here in Chambers. Thank you. And agenda item number 32, vote to enter into executive session, Mass General Law, Chapter 29, Section 23B, to consider and vote regarding the purchase, exchange, taking, lease, or value of real property and to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Uh, I think that has to be a roll okay. call. Okay. Yeah. Do a roll call. We can do it without you. Council Micucci? Yes. Council McDonald? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Council Spinelli? Yes. Council Vandal? Yes. Council Clements? Yes. Council Langevin? Yes. Council Livingood? Thank you. Yes. Yes. Good night, folks.